So yeah, uh, so we did a finish rating, uh, compare finish rating, reconstituting subtotal cholecystectomies, um, doing a meta analysis of the literature. Uh, those are our disclosures. So you know, we know we are going to have a easy day in the R when we see those blue shiny gallbladders, but here in Cleveland, down in Texas, at least I did not see many of those, um, and I think that's the common. Uh, uh, amongst most of us here. But this is more uh, often what we see. So on the left, I was taking ACS call here. You know, I can't even see the gallbladder, splash of momentum. There is inflammation on the abdominal wall. It's so inflamed. And the right was a case in residency. You know, I went to see the patient, acute cholecystitis, and then uh, he said, oh, I had my gallbladder out before. So uh, he was surprised that he needed to undergo a completion cholecystectomy. So I think these cases are becoming more common uh, in complexity and um, you can really get in trouble in the R if you don't take the right precautions. I really wanted to shout out Sages and Dr. Serrat is on the committee of the Safer Cholecystectomy program, which is fantastic, has really good learning modules and has really spread awareness of achieving the critical view of safety that we should try to aim every case. But unfortunately, sometimes it is just not possible. And, uh, and especially in those cases, there is very, very inflammation in the parasitic triangle. And converting to open was the answer, you know, it was the board answer uh, uh, until very recently and I think there's still indications to convert to open. However, there are being emerging other options because there is some morbidity in, in, in converting to open and performing a big uh, rapid quadrant incision, you know, in obese patients. Uh, you know, it's challenging hernias to fix so more business for me later on. But um, there's, I think the main point is that there is no guarantee that critical view of safety is going to be obtained once you convert. Uh, and some people, some surgeons are even more pressured to try to get the critical view of safety and uh, do things that are not very comfortable because they convert and end up getting to the bile duct. And we all have seen those uh, scenarios. And uh, you know, there's this decreased uh, open cholecystectomies that in training. The, the currently the general surgery uh, resident uh, graduates with about eight open cholecystectomies in training versus 120 laparoscopic cholecystectomies. So how we're going to expect the new graduates? are more comfortable doing a difficult case that they did only eight times versus 120 times that they did uh, laparoscopically. So all those factors are uh, uh, resulting in increasing subtotal cholecystectomies being performed. And there's been a lot of um, different techniques being uh, exactly this different descriptions of subtotal cholecystectomies, but this paper from Strasberg is really good in trying to narrow down to two main subtypes of uh, subtotal cholecystectomies. On the left, we can see the fenestrating when the anterior wall uh, is taken out, and there is a cuff of the gobbler that is remained open, and you can close or not the cystic duct, versus on the right, where you close the remnant gallbladder. Um, and there is no uh, clear uh, indication for one or the other. Uh, so uh, there's need for more data on this topic. So uh, one of the reasons we did this, uh, uh, theoretically, there is less likely to have a random gallbladder with the fenestrating because you leave it all open, you don't close it, um, but it's less technically demanding, you don't need to do intracorporeal suturing, more reproducible perhaps, but uh, because you leave it open, maybe there are more bio leaks so that they can often resolve spontaneously as well. Uh, but there's some bio leaks we need ARCP, might need an interventional radiology drain. Uh, there may be some length of stay or morbidity related to the bio leak. Uh, versus the reconstituting, maybe there is less leaks. However, what are the effects of having a remnant gallbladder? They're actually suturing the OR. Are you going to have more completion cholecystectomies? Are you going to have, uh, you know, acute cholecystitis after those subtotals? So uh, we don't know exactly the implications long term uh, about doing this. So uh, one other, another reason we did this project. So we compared laparoscopic subtotal cholecystectomies, fenestrating versus reconstituted. We use the Strasberg uh, definition. Uh, so uh, we excluded any paper that did not follow the definitions that we we saw in the paper by Strasberg. And we wanted to really capture only laparoscopic cases, so we ended up excluding open cases or uh, cases with, uh, p studies with conversion more than 30% because we wanted to really capture just the patients, that the surgeons that stick to laparoscopic approach. So we had uh, 2,800 studies. Uh, we fully reviewed 112. Uh, most of them we ended up excluding because they didn't differentiate the outcomes based on the technique or did not describe a technique that fit the crit our criteria. Uh, of definition of reconstituting or of fenestrating. So we ended up including 13 studies with 985 patients. Uh, about two thirds of them had fenestrating and a third had reconstituting. Most of them retrospective, only one prospective study. 
uh, majority of studies were in uh, uh, urgent uh, cholecystectomies performed in acute care setting, uh, most commonly acute cholecystitis. And overall, in all the studies, only one comorbidity injury reported. So I think this highlights uh, that's a viable safe uh, uh, bailout strategy. As those are all difficult cases, they all aborted a, a total cholecystectomy, and still there was only one comorbidity injury reported. We look here. Uh, this is a forest plot uh, on, of bio leaks. So there were 25.4 percent of bio leaks in the fenestrating technique, and 10.4 percent uh, bio leaks in the reconstituting. And that was statistically significant. So just if you don't know meta analysis, uh, not very familiar. When the far, when the diamond on the forest plot is not crossing the midline, that means it was statistically significant. Uh, and we can see here it was pretty homogeneous that um, most studies reported more bio leaks with the fenestrating technique. The RCP is a similar trend. We can see here 23% and 11%, so more common uh, ARCPs on the fenestrating uh, subgroup, uh, which reflects the bioleak rate, so it makes sense. It's just very important to highlight, you know, the diamond there on the far spot crosses just a little bit the midline, but you see there's one study that is on the, it's very different than the others, and in that study they close all the cystic duct orifice on this fenestrating. So he added a little bit of a technical difference that is important to highlight. And when we did a sensitive analysis and excluded that study, this, the result became more homogeneous and became statistically significant. So there is likely more ERCPs with the fenestrating technique. Completion cholecystectomy was 2.6% with the fenestrating and 2.9% with the reconstituting technique. So uh, not very different actually uh, between, the between the two techniques. With an average follow-up between one to six years in the included study. So uh, there's likely, you know, limited follow-up here, but there's likely there are a higher rate even uh, more than this in the longer ter term follow-up. Readmissions rates, there were no major differences bet between the two. Uh, same thing as reoperations, uh, not statistically significant, and uh, CBD stone, retained CBD stones as well, no, no major differences there. Um, I think major limitations is the retrospective nature of the studies. Uh, and again, we try to our best to stick to clear definitions of fenestrating and reconstituting subtotal cystectomy, but again, we wanted to stratify if the cystic duct was closed or not in the fenestrating. However, very, very, very few studies reported outcomes stratified by that. So I think the future direction of studies should try to report that. And I think more follow-up is also important to know the long-term implications of doing these procedures. So I think laparoscopic subtotal cystectomy is a viable option. It's this uh, selected case where critical view of safety is not achievable. Uh, and the fenestrating subtotal cystectomy is associated with increased bioleak and likely ERC as well. Thank you.